Soft error in semiconductor devices. You might know about it, maybe you heard of it, and frankly, you don't know what to do with it. Soft errors are a real threat to the safety and the reliability of microelectronic devices now. The purpose of this presentation is to provide some guidelines to assess the level of risk of your design and give you some good tool to deal with the problem. Let's go through a quick assessment to check if our device could be at risk. The following checklist represents typical points to investigate when assessing the level of risk. First, our application and the environment in which it operates. We have to check the radiation environment of our final application. Some environmental factors are a cause of increasing soft error in electronic devices. For example, radiotherapy equipment in hospitals, altitude, at 10,000 feet, the high energy neutron flux is 11 times greater than at sea level, or even latitude. Then we need to know if our application is mission sensitive. What would be the impact of a soft error to the overall functionality of the system, to the whole ecosystem? Next, what technology point are you at? 90, 65, 45 nanometers? As technology scales, soft error rate threat increases. Sequential logic soft error rate is now exceeding SRAM soft error rate at 65 nanometer and beyond. This is why it is important to assess your device in terms of memory size, number of flip-flop or register, and if you have any protection schemes like error correcting code, parity code, or hardened cells. But cell count and design are not the only item to be taken into account in this analysis. The packaging of your device can also be a source of soft errors. Materials commonly used in the semiconductor industry can contain traces of alpha particles emitters, like in the solar paste or molding compounds. Alpha particles are emitted by the decay of radioactive elements like thorium, uranium or radon, which can be found everywhere in our environment. Alpha particles have a very high ability to create single even upsets. So what this checklist is telling us is that the three factors, environment, design and packaging, are all contributors and should be checked to assess the software threat. So here's a qualitative assessment for the intrinsic sensitivity of your design, regardless of the environment. According to the size of the embedded memory and the flip-flop count in your ASIC design, mitigation action should be taken as early as the 130 nanometers node. This is the case for ISRAM content, when you've got typically more than 50 megabit in your design. High flip-flop content, more than 1 million flip-flop design, and of course, no protection or mitigation. At the other end of the spectrum, you might not feel the risk until moving into 45 nanometers, especially if your embedded memories are already ECC protected. But a high sensitivity doesn't mean that you are at risk. It all depends on the application and product in which your chip operates and its tolerance to error. As we said, the application in which the device operates dictates the level of liability, therefore the risk. Ask yourself, who will be using the chip? In the medical industry, for example, software seem to have been responsible for the failure and recall of many implantable pacemakers. In the automotive industry, the car and a chip is no longer science fiction. The quantity of electronic component is on the rise in every car, and it provides a favorable habitat for the development of software in critical applications like control system and safety system. In such applications, the risk is very high since a failure can cause human casualties, high corporate liabilities, product recalls, huge warranty costs, and long-term brand reputation impact. In other industries like aerospace, networking, storage, computing, or telecom, the consequences of single event upset can be financially devastating for the same reason. So software prevention and mitigation should be part of your reliability strategy. 
here is a four-step plan to address the issue. So I'm going to ask you to take action now. Step one, have your hardware tested? Accelerated neutron and alpha particle tests allow in few minutes to simulate a lifetime in the field. Step two, understand how and why software happen in your design by using simulation tools. Step three, make design improvements, memory correction schemes, hardened cells, diagnostic software. Step four, monitor closely your supply chain, implement a testi qual testing qualification program, and ask them to use only low and ultra low alpha materials. We will soon broadcast tutorials for each of those four steps implementation. Thank you very much for your time and we hope you enjoyed this presentation.